Hey there everyone, Monk7Mad here today for part 2 of our 2D introduction. In the previous video I made one pretty much exactly the same as this. Since the last video all I've done is change the fill colour of this. And uh, what we're going to do today is we're just going to make this a little bit more complex. The last one, what we did, oops sorry, I zoomed in by mistake there. In the previous video we just made the base. So this, is, this was basically getting to learn how to manipulate the shapes, how to move them. We made an expanding circle, rectangle, and we made a rotating square as it expands as well. And that was pretty much the best lesson that you could sort of get in terms of how to just m move and control the shapes. And what we're going to do today is we're just going to make it so that we do a few little tweaks, just make it run a little bit smoother. We're going to get a change in scenery. And uh, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look quite nice. So what we're going to do to start off with is we're actually going to use the template from the last video that I made. So if you haven't already got that, you can either go back to the previous video and get it. And while you're there, check over the last stuff. Or if you want, I can put a, descript, uh, a link for that in the description of this video as well. But you'll, uh, you'll have to let me know in the comment section below. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to pretty much just modify this project file to make it uh, a more upgraded version. All we're going to do is make it run a little bit more fluidly. And we're actually going to use pretty much everything that we've got here already. And that's the, the biggest part of the previous video was that we were building the base. And I said in the last video how important the base actually is. So the first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to fill this bar in. And uh, what we'll do is we'll press Control D while on the layer. I'm not sure if it's the same on the Mac. If it is the same on the Mac, um, then please leave that in the comment section below. If it's Command, then also let, let me know in the comment section below so that not only I know, but other people know as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go and open up the transform options and we'll see the previous keyframes from earlier and what we're going to do is we're just going to make it so that we we modify the size now in the last video we we took away the constraint proportions and that is where we were able to then edit just one part of the shape which was making the shape expand along its horizontal axis so from left to right and so on the other one we left was the vertical, which was the up and down. And what we're going to do today is we're just going to slightly modify the vertical by changing this. Now, if you're using the same project file as I am, I am going to use 93%, and that's going to make it just a bit thinner and fit into the, the, th the piece a bit more. And whatever you do to one of the keyframes, you have to do exactly the same to the other, um, in, in, especially for this sort of effect because otherwise it will just sort of expand the shape out a bit more which you could do as well but that's not really what I'm demonstrating at the moment and now we're gonna just um, while I'm on the shape actually I'm gonna change the color so it works a little bit better so we're gonna use a blue uh, and I'm just gonna use that pick a color that you want I'm just gonna use a slightly lighter blue and what we're gonna do next is I'm also gonna remove the stroke now in my ones I had a stroke of three pixels and we're gonna take it off because we're we're pulling like a fill effect and if we were to if I select it you can see where the line is approximately just inside the stroke which is exactly the sort of thing that we're after okay so now what we're gonna do is because they're both running at the same time we can't actually see it fill in the shape so we're gonna to have to select both keyframes by highlighting them and moving them down a bit and what I'd say is leave it until the the rectangles hit the edges first before the next one starts so that you get the fill effect like that so let me just round preview it for you it always looks a bit quicker on the first attempt something like that and what you could do from that is you could also create another color that fills that that fills in behind this so this one could be blue it expands and when it gets to about there or just before there you could build another shape and fill that in a different color and have it also expand. Now, the way you would just do that is you'd simply duplicate the layer that we've just done here, change the fill, and just move the keyframes along. Most of this is basically done on maneuvering the keyframes. Okay, so now that's done, we're just going to modify this a little bit. I'm actually going to make this rotate and I'm going to have a few more of these rotate behind it to make it look a little bit like an escalator and then we're going to have that sort of expand out and uh, fill up the page so what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this shape by pressing Control D again and all we're going to do is we're going to open up transform options we're going to move the scale options up a bit 
that's the first thing we do. We're going to move it up a bit. Then what we're going to do is we're going to bring the rotation keyframes up as well. And on this one, we're actually going to leave the first bit about. Let's have a quick think here. Actually, we won't even be able to see it, so it doesn't really matter. Leave the first one at zero. Go to the end keyframe on the rotation and change that so it's a different rotation. So it could just be a very small difference like that. And we'll build another one. Or you could do it where it's sort of in between. So more like, hang on, so more like that. Approximately. So I'm just going to build two more of these. I'm just going to quickly do the same thing. So it's just a case of duplicating this layer that we've just done and then just modifying the transform options again so that this is again slightly different. And you can change the color as well. And depending on how high you want the uh, thing to appear. So at the moment I'm just going to move these two layers beneath so that they're behind the original. And I'm just going to change the fill in of these colors just slightly. And do the same for the last one. Now you can of course change the colour to whatever colour you want. This is just I'm doing it in one colour so it looks a bit more, you know, neat. And what happens now if I just again pram, ram preview it? Actually, I should uh, I've forgotten to do something before I play that out. We're actually going to have to just modify all of these just one more time. So we just move them a little bit further on the the key so that it it runs a bit more just a little bit more out of sync I suppose okay let's see how it looks okay that's fine and then what we can do is we'll get the the shape circle in the middle and when they've just finished hitting the last point, just be actually we'll go a bit before it, we'll open up the options and we're going to turn on the scale again. So press a key frame on the scale, leave that where it is, then go forward a few frames, add another keyframe, and then we're going to go forward a bit more. There's going to be quite a few keyframes in this bit. This time we're going to just reduce the, key the uh, size of the scale to about 80, then go forward a little bit, then something like 110 then go forward again, change the scale back one more time lower, so maybe 80 again. And then on the last one, you're just going to pretty much just expand the scale out so it fills the whole page. Now bearing in mind, this will be the colour of your background. So what you could do if you wanted to is where the circle is, if I just duplicate this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up the circle again, just remove all those keyframes at the end. So I've only got keyframes like that on the top layer. And I'm just going to change the fill colour. So whatever colour you want the background to be. Something perhaps like that. I don't know. That's quite a nice colour for it. So if we just have a quick look, this is what this is what it looks like. Okay. Yeah, I think that looks quite good. And when it's changed page, what you're going to do is this is where you sort of build the, the final bit. So we're going to just build one more new. Actually, I've just realized something from before. Where I've got my pieces here, I'm actually just going to slightly modify the, the keyframes between these two. Because they're just a little bit close together. And I'm pretty sure actually that they're in the same. No, never mind. Just uh, me having a moment there. Okay. Right. Just making it so that this keyframe here is just a little bit further apart. So let's have a look at it runs now. Yeah, okay. That's fine. When the text is actually expand when the uh, sorry, when the circle is expanded, we're gonna go to about let's see, where's it hit? So it expands at just before six, so maybe just about here. 
you would make the new shape layer and on this one we're going to build a white circle with a stroke of about three again in grey and it's going to be a rounded rectangle that I'm going to use but you can use whatever you like press shift and hold shift to keep proportion press the select arrow in the corner up here then move this around to where you want to place it probably best in the center and what we're going to do is we're going to just uh, we're going to go to the first shape we made which was the, the square we're going to open up this and we're actually going to just copy the, the um, keyframes from the start paste it on this last one but we're going to paste it on the last one towards the end so about six seconds in just click on the scale option and paste it in so that now that will happen and that will sync in place and just after that this is where we're going to actually modify the text a little bit put the text, make sure the text is actually beneath this shape and what we're going to do is we're just going to move these keyframes, these keyframes are on opacity running from 0 to 100 but uh, you don't really need to worry about that too much it's just more so that it's not there until the shapes they're blocking it off then we're just going to push a position keyframe in about here and we're going to leave it there for the time being and we're going to go forward a bit more and we're just going to add another keyframe in and we'll just move it down in a straight line just beneath the text here uh, sorry just beneath the shape and then all it does is it it moves down and then you would put a, a logo or whatever you want in this here and then you you pretty much you're pretty much done. I'm just going to quickly change the font of this text by double clicking on it, changing it to change it to a thin text. I generally think thin, thin texts look a bit better. Gotham Gotham book will do. All I'm doing is just uh, oops. Yeah, okay. That is fine. Right, in terms of if you're going to do an image, I just want to show you this very quickly and then I'm uh, going to render it out. Okay, so for a logo or something, what you could do, I'm just going to borrow one of these. Uh, I don't know where my one is at the moment, actually. But you, you would get a, a logo of some sorts. I'm just going to, I'll just use this because it's something I actually made, even though it's pathetic. And what you can do is you're just going to drag it on the keyframe above the shape. If it's got white on it, then um, you're going to want to change the where is the thing I'm looking for here the blending mode by opposite clicking on it if it's white background change the multiply multiply removes all white from the image and uh, then you would just sort of I'm just going to lock this for a minute because it's getting in the way okay so you'd get your shape and you just sort of scale it a bit better and sometimes shift won't actually respond if you're pressing shift before you move the shape so if you're moving the shape while holding shift at the start it might not do anything so click on the shape start moving it then press shift and then it will respond okay so you put your logo there or whatever and if you wanted to you could just simply press T on the keyboard for opacity and just sort of phase it in from about here change the opacity at the start to zero and then what it does is that will appear and so will the text and and you get the idea that that's pretty much how it works and you can add music and and all sorts much more interesting things i mean what you could do is instead of having the white circle you could have a picture and just expand it out and that would fill up the page and so on so that's going to be it for me today guys thank you for watching i want to quickly show you how to render it and this is uh i'll call it part two part two spending that wrong okay right how you're going to render it is if you've got some audio when you go to composition, add to render queue, you're going to change the output module, leave the render settings for the time being. Click on QuickTime Movie. If you've added audio, tick the audio option. If not, don't. Click OK. And just pick where you want to save it. Give it a name. So this could be 2D Introduction. Click Save and then just hit the, uh, the render button. And the good thing about 2D intros is they don't actually take too long and you'll get a very slow preview of it. 
and uh, I'll play it at the end of the video so you can see how it turned out. You can modify it as much as you like. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching, guys. Have a great day. Um, the template is in the description. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Take care.